In this video, I'd like to explain how you can download the Kona Cotton swatches file from my website, Pile O Fabric, and then install it in Illustrator and Photoshop. So you'll see here on my blog, there's a post for Kona Illustrator swatches and RGB values. If you scroll down to the bottom of the post, you'll see a big, gigantic picture button here that says, click here to download. This is where you download the file. Now, the file that we're going to download is an ASE file. This is a file for Photoshop or Illustrator, um, specifically Illustrator. And it will not work in any other programs. So if you don't have Illustrator or Photoshop, and you download it, it's going to be foreign to your computer and you're not going to be able to open it. So this is something that's specifically for Illustrator and Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this button to download. You'll see it's going to download at the bottom here. It's going to say Kona Cotton 271.ase. File is officially on my computer. So I'm using a Mac and I'm going to go to the Finder window, go to Downloads and look for that file that I just downloaded. So here it is right here and I've already dragged it to the desktop to make things easier but that's what you would need to do. You need to click it and drag it, drop it on your desktop so it's easy to find. So Here's my file right here on the desktop and I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. So to begin I'm going to explain how to install this in Adobe Illustrator first. So I'm going to use my finder window, go to applications, Adobe Illustrator a swatch is also a preset, so we're going to go to presets, English, swatches. So here is your swatches. Now you might not have as many swatches as me here, that's okay. Um, they can be downloaded off the internet, so I have a lot of them. And so what you need to do is install the swatch file that we have here on our desktop into our swatches folder. So we're going to go ahead and drag it from the desktop into the swatches folder. All right, so now it's installed. You've got Kona Cotton 271 in there. So we can go ahead and close out of this and open up Illustrator. I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a blank file right now. So if this was a quilt, I'm making a 60 by 60 inch quilt. I'm gonna create this file. Now by default, over here in your swatch panel, which is this little icon with the windows. It looks like a window. And now if you can't see this icon, another way to get to it is to go to window and swatches. Okay, so here's your swatch panel. By default, Kona Cotton's not showing up. By default, I get these random colors every single time. And that's okay. When I want to use Kona Cotton in a project that I'm working on, I can just bring it in to my swatch panel. So to do so, you're going to click on these little books down here. This is a little menu for libraries. And you're going to see your new uh, Kona Cotton swatch installed. So you see this list here, you got art history, all of those. Well, here is Kona Cotton 271. So it's always going to be right there. So I'm going to click on it. And what it's going to do is it's going to bring up an additional window, which I find to be kind of annoying. So um, I'd rather it be just in my swatches panel and not a separate little window. So what I like to do is I like to click on the folder icon, which selects all the colors and drag it over into my swatch panel. Then I just close out of this because that's not necessary. So now I've got my Kona Cotton swatches right there, uh, easy to get to. So the cool part is from here, you can just start designing. Let's say I have some squares. I'll create a few squares here, and I want to fill them with Kona color. These color swatches are in order with the Kona color card and the swatches on Robert Kaufman's website. So you can just go ahead, like the first one, meringue. Let's fill this box with meringue, and let's fill this box with magenta. Now, if you noticed, when I'm hovering over one of these swatches, with my mouse, it'll tell me what color it is. So that's a violet, 1383. Here's pomegranate, 1295. 
so you can see the color. If you want to know even more information about a swatch, perhaps pomegranate, double click on the swatch and you'll see everything about it. Right now it's a CMYK color and you can see the values that make it, see, make it the color that it is. If you touch those, you're going to you make an adjustments to those, it will no longer be pomegranate. It'll change the color. So you want to keep those the same. If you want to see what it would be in RGB, you just go ahead and click RGB in the menu, and that's the values of pomegranate for RGB. That might be helpful um, if you're working on a specific project and you need to know the actual value. Let's say you want to know the hex value, which is used for web, uh, web design. Um, you would just close out of that and go over to the color here and on the left to the color picker and you can see the hex value here. The hex value is DA1470. So that's all the information you can get from those. Um, we try to get these colors as close as possible. Um, I used the Robert Kaufman swatches from their website to create these swatches in Adobe Illustrator and it's, it's about as close as it's going to get when you're dealing with different monitors because your monitor that you're staring at right now is going to show colors probably a little different than my monitor and Robert Coffin's monitor and everyone's monitor and so it, it's really hard to get the exact colors. Um, but this is close and this will really help you when you're designing quilts. So that's it. When you, um, when you save this file, when you save this design, each time you open up this quilt the swatches will remain over here in the right panel. Um, that's for that file. If you create a new Illustrator file, you'll notice the swatches are not there anymore. Just remember, go to the books and add them. And you can do that for each project. So I'm going to close out of this and we're going to talk about Photoshop. So you've got Photoshop open. And what we're going to need to do is add these swatches to our swatch panel. Um, the swatch panel on my Photoshop is in the upper right hand corner here by color, swatches. And if it's not already showing, and it may not, you can go to window and click on swatches. That'll make it pop up here in the right hand corner. So, we need to install these swatches. What you're going to do is you're going to click on this little line arrow menu here on the right hand side of the swatch panel. It's going to drop down and you're going to scroll down to load swatches. Click on load swatches. Now, you need to find the file, the ASC file that you downloaded from your finder window here. So I have it in download still right here, Kona Cotton 271.ase. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it and then click open. And what that's going to do is add the Kona Cotton colors. There they are. And they're in there twice because I've done this more than once. So starting right here, all the way down, those are all my Kona Cotton colors. And those are going to stay there for good. Uh, for some reason, Photoshop saves them every time um, from what I've found so far. So you're going to have them there. And you can create a new document and do the same thing. Create like a square and the squares fill color. You're going to choose one. Let's choose this purple. It's going to end up over here in our color picker. And I can select that color and use it. Or I could select from the fill button here for the properties of this square and choose my cone and color. So, um, and the same thing, if you hover over a color in Photoshop, it's going to show you that it's magenta 12, 14, or whatever color it is. So that's it. You can use these files for Photoshop or Illustrator, and hopefully they help you speed up your quilt design process. And if you have any questions about installation, or if you have any problems, please let me know. Today I was using Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud and Adobe Illustrator Creative Cloud, so the newest versions of Illustrator and Photoshop. Of course, it's going to be slightly different if you're using an older version. If you have any questions, email me at alyssa at pileofabric.com.